We begin tonight with the list of the world's happiest countries. For the first time in more than a decade, the United States does not make the top 20. Joining us tonight to talk about your health is Jennifer Redding, Executive Director of Behavioral Health Services for the University of Maryland Upper Chesapeake Health. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So um, more detail on, on this study. I think it came from Gallup. Mm -hmm. I think they look at it on like a rolling three-year basis. So it's not related to the, the current difficulties in the world. And it's really focused on, on young people, right? It certainly is. It really does look at the age span across the lifespan. But um, what was very interesting this go around is that for um, individuals 30 and younger, who traditionally are, are rated as, as the happiest of our, our lifetime um, have, have ranked the lowest in happiness, even amongst those who are 60 and older. So it was really interesting. What do you think accounts for, for the change? Why, why would today's young people be less happy than their peers around the world, especially as compared to a few years ago? I think when we look at, you know, from 30 year olds and younger, when we look at sort of how they have experienced life, you know, from a very early time, um, computers were already invented, social media, um, that access to information with the snap of a finger. And I think there's a combination of all of those things that um, while there are some very positive benefits, there's some fallout. And I think the number one sort of fallout piece is that, that connection, authentic connection is sort of what I describe it as. And they, they spend their lives like immersed in these inauthentic mm. connections on, on Instagram and TikTok, two sites that I don't really know anything <laughs> about. Yeah. And I wonder if they're, if they're more popular here than other places or people's um, use of screen time is, is greater somehow. Don't yeah, know. what I think is interesting is that lack of perspective, because I think if you were to ask a 30 something, you know, or a 20 something um, person, they would say absolutely it's authentic uh, connection. And, you know, for those of us who are a little bit older, you know, we, we know what life was like when we had to be in front of someone to actually get to know them and to make friends and to hang out with them. Whereas now hanging out is really with a screen in between each of them and they could be miles and miles and countries away. Um, and while there are positive benefits to that, you know, we were talking earlier, I think that what you present on the screen isn't always real and it can feel very uh, frustrating it can feel very sort of making you feel less than because if you're not as attractive as that other person if you're not as uh, well off financially perceivably it can make you feel like something's wrong with you and you're not quite as happy so that that authenticity factor isn't really there and, and even if you have the benefit of somebody having told you that those pictures you're right. seeing you know, those are doctored, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's an image that, that somebody or maybe some company wants you to, mm -hmm. to perceive. It's not real. Right. You, your, your brain's still going to see it as real. Well, and I think it's the amount of time and exposure to those images and those interactions. And so, yeah, you know, intellectually, you can hear that that's not real or it's filtered or it's, you know, someone on their very best day of the year taking pictures. But when you're constantly exposed to that over and over and over again, it, it really does sort of mess with your mind. And you, you really do sort of compare yourself just even on an unconscious sort of level. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a, a question or a thought about why Americans are not as happy as we previously were, uh, give us a call at the number on the screen or send an email to livequestions at mpt.org. Everybody says the Internet is just a, a cesspool. So the, mm -hmm. the first step is to get out of him. It's hatred and, you know, all sorts of nonsense out there. How, how would you advise, particularly a young person, mm -hmm. to to limit, to back away from it a little bit? How do you do that? I think like with everything. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. It's addictive. It is addictive. <laughs> it can be, yeah. yeah. I think like with everything in life, it's about moderation. I think that there are a lot of good things, you know, that come with the internet. We can get information, um, again, like I said, with the snap of a finger that we, you know, it would take hours and hours, if not weeks and weeks, to go to the local library and, you know, to make contact with those in other countries, and we can get that immediately now. So that's a positive. It really advances lots of different things, but I think it's that moderation, so balancing it with sort of 
real life interactions, getting in front of someone that is actually in the same space as you, going outside, experiencing nature, exercising, all of those things that um, are equally as important. What do you tell people? Um, you, you don't have a big clinical practice. You're, you're more in management uh, mm -hmm. these days. But what would you tell people? What would your colleagues tell mm -hmm. people? You know, a lot of lonely people out yeah. there. How, how do you um, get out in this world? And, and maybe the pandemic, mm -hmm. we can talk about that, fed into it a little bit when everybody was cloistered. Sure. But, but now you need to make some, some new contacts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody can be a little bit shy. What, yeah. What's the best advice? I think the pandemic really brought um, to a level that most folks were finally able to recognize the power of connection. Um, you know, for those of us that have been doing mental health and counseling for as long as I have, we've known it for a very long time, but the pandemic sort of brought out that level of awareness that we really do need as humans you know, contact. It goes back to caveman days, you know, where we had to be together to stay alive, you know, to, to, to beat the dinosaurs, if you will. And so now to, to have more of a connection, it's, it's, and I'm stuttering, it's going to places where other people might be. So, you know, even something as simple as going to the local store, it's not just sort of having your blinders on and you know going to buy what you came there to buy but maybe setting a goal for yourself and it might sound silly but you know giving one person that you interact with a compliment oh I like your shoes or oh your hair looks great and as simple as that sounds um, and maybe if you're shy like I am that is scary as I don't know what but it really does feel good to help someone else feel good and so you, you never know what other people are going through and a compliment, you know, as simple as that can really make their day. And so starting that way, you know, if you have hobbies, if you have common interests, you know, trying to get outside of your home, outside of the screen and actually, you know, participate in those in, in, the, in the real world, in the in-person world. I mentioned to you before we were on the air that I have a favorite park bench mm -hmm. in a beach town. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this beach town sort of um, sold park benches. I guess they were they were raising money for it. So they had plaques on, on all the benches. And, and this one basically had the advice that, that you should, um, anybody you come in contact with, you should make their day better mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. And it's the simplest thing. Yeah. And Maybe I'm too self-engaged or something. It never occurred to me that you yeah. should really, what a great thing to do, yeah. and, and it works both ways. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes hand in hand with gratitude. You know, so many of us sort of, like you described, we kind of get stuck in our own world and we're thinking about, you know, our own hard times and what we need to do for that day and all of you know our, our to-do list and so sometimes it is hard to to remember that there are those outside of ourselves that really could benefit from a smile eye contact you know a simple compliment and so coupled that with the gratitude you know again we sometimes kind of get into a pity party for ourselves if we've got a long week or you know we're not making as much money as we want to or whatever and so really making a conscious choice to appreciate the things that are going for our lives. And sometimes that's just, I woke up and the sky is blue, you know, so, but, yeah. but make an intentional practice of gratitude. And I want to come back to the, the pity party and when yeah. it, when that crosses from being something we all do sure. into something where you ought to go see somebody and talk to a professional. But we have a phone call from Montgomery County. This is Richard. Richard, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Yeah. My question is this. Isn't the lack of happiness more closely related to a lack of optimism in the American government, the future of America, democracy was once thought of as the best form of government in the world, respect for America around the world, all those things are gone. Look at the, look at the government, unable to perform, unable to so, solve the nation's problems. Richard, that's an outstanding question. We appreciate the phone call. The interesting thing about the, the timing of this was, um, as we said, it's sort of uh, like a rolling 
a pool of data. So it's mm -hmm. not just, if you, if you ask people a week before the election, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of people down, right? Sure. What, what do you think? Well, I think at any given point in time, you know, depending on your perspective, uh, you know, with politics and the state of the world, it can feel overwhelming. And so I think that absolutely does impact, you know, sort of the global level of happiness or lack thereof. And so I think it does, you know, one way or the other, it, it can certainly have an impact. Maybe maybe it's my uh, media negativity filtering into it, but but when I when I looked at this report, my first thought was, wait, the United States was ever in the top twenty? Right. I mean, I thought it was all Scandinavia, you know, maybe mm. some island in the Pacific. Right. They're happier because they're away from all that stuff. Sure. Well, well, let me come back to the important thing. Um, okay. For for somebody who's a little bit beyond unhappy, mm -hmm. and how do you know? Um, when you should talk to somebody, mm -hmm. and is that the sort of thing that you do at the Klein Family Center? We do, and so I think in general it's important to understand sort of changes from your normal routine. So we all go through bits of, of time where we feel blue or sad, but for adults, if, it, if it's lasting and you can't seem to kick it for longer than two weeks. And so it's sort of looking at the extremes. So, you know, for example, you're sleeping a lot or not at all. Your, uh, your appetite has increased or it's completely gone away. And again, I'm not talking about one or two sort of meals or one or two sort of days, but over the span of about two weeks for adults. For kids, it's a little bit shorter. It's about a week. And so you want to really look at that disruption and functioning. Things that you used to like to do really aren't fun anymore. You're not finding the ability to sort of kind of get back out there. If you work, if you go to school, you're really not wanting to do those things. Um, you're, you're having a hard time just getting your basics sort of done. That's the time that you probably want to reach out. Um, the Klein Family Center, we're located in Hartford County, and it's much like a physical health urgent care walk-in center, but it's for mental health. Um, if you're having, you know, symptoms of feeling really depressed or anxious and you just can't seem to kick it, we, we don't want you to wait until it's a crisis. We want you to come in. There's no appointment necessary. We're wow. open every day of the year, every holiday, even on the weekends, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. You literally walk in. You're going to get in front of a licensed therapist. If you need to see a doctor or a nurse practitioner, you can get in front of one of them on the spot. Um, what we have found is that you know, asking for help, especially mental health help, is really hard. And so when you finally reach that point, you don't want to have to wait. And so we're really trying to improve that access. So recognizing that it takes a lot of courage and we want to help you through that process. Okay, to, if you're outside Hartford County, mm -hmm. talk to a primary care, is that a Absolutely. good starting point? Absolutely, that's a great place to start. Um, mental health and navigating sort of that world can be very overwhelming and confusing. So certainly starting with your primary care physician, but also we have a phone number, 1-800-NEXT-STEP. You don't have to live in Hartford County to use it. Um, you can call 24 seven, there's gonna be someone to answer it and they can help you find someone in your area Gotta to leave talk it to. there, 800 next -step step. Yep. Jennifer Redding with uh, University of Maryland Upper Chesapeake. Thanks for your time. Sure. Thank you.